okay and and some little bit more discussion on inversion charge and surface potential in general okay so all right this picture we are all familiar with right so we are now talking about threshold voltage and inversion all right so this picture we are familiar with we have a p type semiconductor we have applied a sufficient gate voltage here bands are bent and we can see here ei is below ef and 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 therefore we are in the inversion region here right so this we know now if if you want to know how is your hole density changing in your semiconductor and how's your electron density changing in your semiconductor see if this equation makes sense py at any point so i'm taking y is equal to 0 here so py is na exponent minus q psi by kt what is psi in the bulk here 0 psi is 0 here and what is the value of p which is equal to na as you go in deeper into your semiconductor what happens to psi psi you know bands are bending down which means psi is increasing when energy decreases potential increases here so psi is increasing and your hole density as you go hole density is decreasing here which is what we know you're going in, into the depletion region and electron density follows the opposite behavior n equal to ni square over na exponent q psi by kt so in the bulk you put psi equal to zero we have ni square over na and as you go deeper into this the electron density builds up right so th these two equations tell us what is p and n inside in these regions here okay all right suppose i want to know how much is q inversion we know q inversion lies q inversion is due to what n electrons and where does it lie it lies here right close to the interface here in general you can write q inversion is equal to minus q because we are talking about electrons in integrated ny is the electron density times dy and you know you have to integrate from zero to deep inside i mean you know from zero to all this region here and because electron density is varying so rapidly the upper limit you can put infinity you can put bulk whatever you can put it doesn't really matter okay you might as well put infinity here because electron density decays exponentially we can see here if i'm saying electron density decays exponentially is that a correct uh, 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 thing here Huh? How does uh, electron des, uh, density decay? Psi, psi changes as what? How does psi change? Psi in this region, how is psi changing? Quadratically, Quadratically right? Psi is y square. So n is changing very rapidly. Right? n is changing very rapidly here. Of course, when you get very close to the interface, in addition, psi very close to the interface there is inversion charge also so psi is changing even faster okay all right so the point is that the inversion charge as you can see here decays very fast and therefore you can take it almost to infinity it doesn't really matter this particular limit all right let's calculate this particular limit here yeah the uh, addition of exponential uh, the exponential is changing the value of 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 the exponential is changing uh, uh so uh, so q inversion uh, 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 what we are talking about in this case what we are saying is this limit is immaterial whatever limit you put you put somewhere in the bulk right now or or uh, uh, larger uh, some finite value or you put infinite it doesn't really matter all right so uh, q inversion then if i look at this minus q zero to infinity ny dy we can write this as ny we take from here n i square over n a zero to psi s exponent q psi by k t fine d y by d psi into d psi no problem so far okay no major assumption nothing of course there's a big assumption that we have been making throughout the discussion is when inversion charge is confined very close to the interface we know that 
the correct picture is a quantum mechanical picture charge is quantized and all that we are, so we are doing we're taking a classical picture right so let's forget about the quantum mechanical picture here so this is the q inversion here now this is where i'm going to make an approximation q inversion is q n i square over n a is fine zero to psi s exponent q psi by kt D, dy by d psi is what electric field minus of this is electric field okay minus of this is electric field and what we are saying is that the inversion charge is confined in a very narrow place and one is sort of taking this dy by d psi out and saying some electric field very close to the interface electric field is changing we know that it's changing we we drew a diagram electric field was changing right but we are taking out and that's where the approximation is that we are saying some some average field is there close to the interface e0 okay is it okay if this integral q n i square over n a exponent q psi by kt dy by d psi this is nothing but d psi by dy is nothing but electric field and we are taking it out uh, approximating it by a constant value very close to the interface okay so there's an approximation involved e0 and then once you take the field out then it's exponent q psi by kt here and so that's easily integrable and you say exponent q psi s by kt so big assumption uh, there's an assumption here about this field being some value here field is changing but we have approximated the field is constant okay so that's the inversion charge okay so let, let me put all the values here for you phi f we know is kt by q ln na by ni if i use this particular definition na square over ni square you can see clearly is exponent to phi f by kt by q okay if you take log and make it exponential here then n a square over n i square is exponent to phi f by kt by q. Depletion charge we know is square root 2 es q n a psi s here. That's equal to approximately we are saying is e s e naught here. Q inversion we have written here. So uh, mind you we are not doing an exact analysis. We are doing a simplified analysis. Okay. So if I take this expression for Q inversion and I know Q depletion is here in terms of e0. What I can do is I can write Q inversion in, in this particular form. Q inversion is kt by q, 2 psi s, q depletion, exponent q psi s minus 2 phi f by kt. Okay. Approximate sign, approximate value of Q inversion charge. Okay. In terms of depletion charge. Depletion charge is also in terms of psi s. Okay. Fine. Let's take this particular example. So what I want to do is through this, I want to calculate, for example, at threshold, we know at threshold what is psi s? Psi s is equal to 2 phi f. So this will cancel and I will get an estimate of what is the inversion charge. How much inversion charge is there at threshold? Okay. And depletion charge at threshold also we can calculate. So let's do these calculations and find, find things out. So I've taken uh, the following. We have taken this as, as not metal, but N plus poly, polysilicon. This is SiO2. Uh, 9.6 nanometer, 96 angstrom, and this is my bulk with a p-type doping of 3 times 17 here. The, the numbers that I've taken are typical of, let's say, a 0.5 micron technology. If you have a 0.5 micron technology, the oxide thickness is roughly 100 angstrom, dopings in our, all, all are under the oxide, the dopings are of this order here. So uh, let's do the calculations for here. So N plus poly here, let's calculate the flat band voltage. Can everybody see that the work function, phi ms, the m is now n plus poly. The work function will be, for an n plus poly, how much will it be? Polysilicon is silicon, which is heavily doped. So it will be basically the electron affinity, which is 4.05. The work function of the semiconductor will be, I've calculated for you phi f. Phi f is kt by qln 0.437. So work function of the semiconductor will be, 4.05 electron affinity plus half the band gap plus 5, which turns out to be 5.0. Okay, so flat band voltage then turns out to be minus 1 volt for the system. Vt then, Vt is 5 ms plus the, the, you know, the depletion charge divided by C oxide plus 2 5 F. If I calculate this, Vt turns out to be 0.7 volt. 
okay, which is typical of a 0.5 micron uh, uh, CMOS technology. Here. Depletion charge. Depletion charge where? At threshold. Depletion charge at threshold, and I'm not looking at Q, you know, uh, but depletion charge divided by Q. Okay, how much is it if we put in the numbers? 1.84 into 10 power 12. So that's the amount of charge per centimeter square. Of course, if you want charge, you, can, you have to multiply by Q, but that's the number. 1.84 into 10 power 12. That many acceptor atoms are there which are ionized, which are there in the depletion region per centimeter square. 1.84 into 10 power 12. Now, if I use my expression for inversion charge at 2 phi f, if I calculate Q inversion at 2 phi f, it turns out to be 2.74 into 10 power 10. That's the amount of inversion charge. So we are saying at threshold. So we are saying now my system is entering into stronger inversion. But at threshold, how much is my inversion charge? I compare this with the depletion charge. Depletion charge is 1.84 or almost like 2 times 10 power 12. And this is like 2 times 10 to the power 10. 100 times less now, right now. It's 100 times less at threshold. Okay, so it's not that at threshold now my inversion charge has suddenly become equal to or much larger or whatever. No, inversion charge is still much smaller than this. But note, depletion charge is uh, how does it increase square root of potential? Inversion charge, how does it increase? Exponential. So it's going to very rapidly build up. Very, very rapidly build up, right? 2.74 into 10 power 10. So inversion charge, so that's why, you know, when we calculate Vt, Vt has what when we calculate all this we have depletion charge but we have not taken into account the inversion charge in the calculation of field what is this term this term is the drop in the oxide and the drop in the oxide is due to what is due to charges here the field and this is nothing but depletion charge here so we didn't take the inversion charge into account to calculate the vt here right remember when we drew the fields and all that we said the field is primarily due to depletion charge we ignored the inversion charge which makes sense here Inversion charge, as you can see here, is two orders of magnitude smaller. So it's not going to affect my field at this point, at threshold. It's not going to affect my field, and therefore my threshold calculation is, is okay. Now, as I apply now a voltage larger than Vt, what will happen? Inversion charge will increase. But the increase of inversion charge, what will it require? Psi s to become higher. How high does psi s go? How high does psi s go? So psi s is not going to remain at 2 phi f, right? How high does it go? Now I'm talking about 0.5 micron technology, right? In 0.5 micron technology, the supply voltage is around 3.3. You don't go beyond 3.3, okay? 3.3 is the limit. So what is the maximum voltage I can apply here? 3.3. So how much is the maximum inversion charge I can have? How do I calculate inversion charge now? Maximum inversion charge. Q inversion, Q inversion equal to C ox Vg minus Vt. What is the maximum voltage I can apply? 3.3. What is the Vt that I've calculated? 0.7. So I can calculate how large an inversion charge, right? <laughs> so let's do that. So all this is there. So I'm calculating Q inversion at 3.3. And how much is the inversion charge now? If I put C ox Vg minus Vt, everything is there. 5.8 into 10 power 12. Right? Remember, what was the depletion charge at threshold? 1.84 into 10 power 12. Inversion charge at threshold was sort of negligible, two orders less than this. But then, when I go to 3.3, I have an inversion charge of so much, 5.85 into 10 power 12. Right? Now, inversion charge is large, as you can see here. 5.85 into 10 power 12 is larger than this. Okay? All right? Everybody clear? Seox? Vg minus Vt divided by Q will give me the total inversion charge here. Now, if I take this uh, inversion charge and I plug it into my expression, and I want to know what is the surface potential at that point, right? So I, I, I write this value as 5.85 into 10 power 12 here, and I want to find out how much is the surface potential at that point. And surface potential turns out to be 2 phi f plus about 5.36 kT by Q. So it has gone beyond 2 phi f. Of course, I have a lot more inversion charge. How much beyond? About 5 times kT by Q. 
and these numbers they do vary okay the numbers will depend on uh, the how much dopings and things like that here but a rough value that you can see here maybe five a more accurate calculation actually shows that psi s is 2 phi f plus about 6 this is an approximate equation it's about 6 times kt by q so surface potential when you go to 3.3 is becoming close to 1 volt at threshold how much is it 0.874 so it is increasing it doesn't remain constant it is increasing and uh, increases to about a volt here okay now the change is you know threshold voltage was 0 0.7 and at 3.3 .3, the surface potential has become equal to 1 volt well is it negligible uh, uh, or or should you take into account See, look at this equation. What is this equation based on? C oxide, Vg minus Vt, it is based on the fact that surface potential doesn't change. Right? You assumed it to be equal to 2 f and you're assuming it that it remains constant. But we know that it does change. It does increase from 0.87 to 1 volt here. So should you ignore or should you take into account? This is 3.3. 3.3. So what you're talking about is there is an additional voltage change of about 0.13 this is 3.3 .3 and 0.13 let's say <laughs> should you ignore or should you take into account it's not entirely negligible but it's less than 10 percent right if this is 3.3 .3 and, and an additional term is coming about 0.13 it's not negligible but let's say this one was uh, uh, one volt then these things become do become significant right so as you go to lower voltage a change in surface potential as you go from vt to strong inversion of course the value of psi s if you go to one volt the value of psi s also will change all this will change so but it may become significant and and uh, 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 so the point was how much is the inversion charge at threshold well it's very small 2.74 at 10 per 10 but rapidly builds up how much extra uh, surface potential do you need? About 5 to 6 kT by Q you need to build up that much amount. Okay? Uh, uh, that much amount of charge. All right? Uh, so there are a lot of things to carry from here. You know, roughly how much is the inversion charge generally in my MOS system? The number in strong inversion, what is the number that you should carry? 10 power 12. That's the number. A few times 10 power 12 is a number that you should Keep in mind, that's the roughly the order of inversion charge that is there in my system. All right, so that's uh, as far as this one here. The other point was uh, threshold voltage, we have been saying, is a point where NS, the electron density at the surface, is equal to hole density in the bulk, which is Na, and it gives us a potential psi s equal to 2 phi r. Right? But then, can I... Measure this at what point is ns equal to na? Electron density is not accessible to me. I can't measure electron density. I can't measure surface potential also Right these things are not measurable surface potential. I can't measure I can infer by uh, You know doing some measurements and all that and using an uh, equation and maybe infer but surface potential I can't directly measure neither is electron density at the surface I can measure and I'm defining my threshold voltage is a voltage in terms of something which is perhaps which are not measurable right so uh, in terms of what is it that in a MOS capacitor I can measure I can measure capacitance so what does this condition that you see here ns equal to na psi s equal to 2 phi f what does it represent in terms of capacitance Huh? Huh? Okay, so it, this is the capacitance curve, right? Where is the threshold voltage? Huh? We know this, right? We know that in this region, this is the picture that we have, C oxide and depletion capacitances in series. What about here? We have C oxide depletion capacitance and inversion capacitance also right this is the picture here where is threshold voltage here somebody saying here the lowest point is vt huh? 
somewhere here huh? or somewhere here where is it where is it? bt because this is something that i can measure right in a in a mos cap what i can measure is a capacitance voltage characteristics now where is vt in this thing there? how do i identify vt this would be nice if it this were vt lowest point so i just go and sketch my cv measure my cv lowest point i go and i say okay fine that's my vt at that point you are claiming that my surface potential is equal to 25 and how do you claim that that at this point my surface potential is equal to 25 how do you say that somebody say that is to the left of it um, if left is a possibility then i'm also saying maybe to the right of it the right of it is also a possibility where is it vt huh? left of it okay so let's look into let's look into this here all right so we again we'll do a simplified calculation okay so the numbers are not going to be exact exact there so q inversion we said you know in, in my earlier uh slice i had shown is about kt and i square over na e0 exponent q psi s by kt e0 is about 2 q n s i s by e s here depletion capacitors we know here right okay let's calculate the inversion capacitance this is you know it's rising because of this so let's calculate the inversion capacitance so inversion capacitance is dq inversion by d psi s change in inversion charge with respect to psi s so let me take the derivative here and if i take the derivative straight forward but not so straightforward i'm uh, there should be a double approximation here because when i'm taking the derivative first of all there's an approximation here when i'm taking the derivative we know this also varies with psi s and this also varies with psi s but we know that the dominant term is going to be the exponential so i, I didn't take the derivative here right I, I kept it as it is and simply took the derivative of the exponential okay so a double uh, approximate sign here uh, so this is c inversion okay and now what i can do is i, I have a, a c depletion here and i can write uh, c depletion in terms of c inversion so c inversion is c depletion exponent q psi s minus 2 phi by kt okay so at threshold what do we get you guys told that at threshold uh, when psi s is equal to 2 phi what do i get threshold is a condition where c depletion is equal to c inversion okay this is a more general condition than saying psi s equal to 2 phi a more general definition of threshold voltages is the voltage at which the depletion capacitance is equal to inversion capacitance. Under specialized case, I may get this psi s equal to 2 phi. But in other cases, I may not get psi s equal to 2 phi. Okay, keep that in mind. Sir, so why we have considered E0 constant? Which one? E0 is, uh, goes as square root of psi s and Q inversion, there is a psi s here. So to the first order, when I take the derivative, this is a much slower function as compared to this one. So we approximated it. Okay. So what it says is psi s equal to 2 of phi f is c inversion equal to c depletion. So at threshold, I have inversion capacitance which is equal to the depletion capacitance. Right. <laughs> and as I'm saying, this is a more general condition than saying psi s equal to 2 phi f. And this is something that is measurable also. This is something that is measurable also. Okay. Unlike saying psi s is equal to 2 phi f. That's not measurable. Or n s is equal to na. That's not measurable. This is measurable. Okay. Because I'm saying depletion capacity is equal to inversion capacity. All right. So let's look at that here. So when I'm coming from here and here, we know that inversion charge is negligible. I have this picture here. Right. C up here. When I'm coming here, let's say, uh, so this is my uh, in my depletion region here right depletion region here now the moment inversion charge we are saying at threshold what happens inversion charge becomes equal to c depletion here so that's the threshold condition you can clearly see that this will give me higher capacitance than this compare this this one where i'm getting inversion charge compared with, with this one here. 
this can't be this situation can't be the minimum capacitors condition here. this just can't be the minimum capacitors condition because now in addition to depletion capacitors you have a inversion capacitance also and inversion capacitance is as large as depletion capacitance it's simply not the minimum point where will it be is higher here it is this point here when you go towards the left in fact inversion capacitance is negligible here so that's not the threshold condition here threshold condition is when inversion capacitance has become equal to depletion capacitance we've just said that and therefore you are here at this point here okay so now what i can do is you know for the example that i was considering i had given you that 0.5 micron technology and all that if we calculate this point this point now note that everything is normalized normalized by oxide capacitance this point is about 0.32 minimum capacitance approximately okay 0.32 and this point is where inversion capacitance is actually equal to depletion capacitance this point is actually 0.48 is a little higher here okay so the uh, threshold is not the minimum point threshold is a little higher than the minimum point here okay so that's where the threshold voltage is now one can show based on this approximate calculation that we have said you know let's say the minimum uh, minimum capacitance is made up of c ox and c depletion and what is the threshold where i have c ox c depletion plus inversion here so based on that one can show that the capacitance at approximately again uh, you know these are all approximate so capacitance at the threshold point is equal to about 0.5 one plus one by c min beta if this is the minimum capacitance the capacitance at threshold point is a little higher and given by this sort of approximate expression one can refine this expression one can make you know with models and all that there is always a first order model and then you can make a little bit more accurate calculations and all that you can improve the model and all that okay i don't want to go into i i want to address the concept rather than the exact uh, value here so one can calculate where the what is the capacitance that one expects at threshold that's what i'm saying based on what is the capacitance and minimum so at threshold minimum is this one here and at threshold you know maybe i leave it as a homework problem you can do some simple calculation and show so this is the suppose you assume this is the minimum here and at this point what do you have c oxide c dip plus another c dip and so you can easily show that at vt you have this kind of an expression okay so it's a little higher here now again one can do the calculation at this point if my calculations are correct psi s at this point is 0.76 and vg is about 0.51 at this point threshold we know psi s is equal to 2 phi f which is 0.87 and vg is about 0.7 yeah so it's not something it's not so sharp that you can say well i can neglect it this point is 0.5 minimum point and this point is at about 0.7 so there is a difference between the two all right and well in some cases uh, it, it depends on the uh, thing how fast is it rising and all that and this is an approximate calculation maybe next time i'll bring you a, a silvaco a simulation of the same thing and we'll see where exactly sias and uh, these are how well our uh, analytical models are uh, match here but what i wanted to tell is that uh, the definition of threshold as a point where the inversion capacitance is equal to depletion capacitance uh, is a more practical uh, definition which is measurable which is measurable here you can because it implies a certain value of uh, capacitance And, and one can relate it to a minimum value of capacitance also so once you measure a cv curve you can locate where the threshold point is based on that capacitance uh, the definition here and in a specific case of uniform doping and all that uh, you know it it says that the surface potential is equal to 2 phi f in other cases it may not it may not tell you that the surface potential at threshold is equal to 2 phi f 